Welcome, race fans, to the Domino's TYJ Racing Serve Pro 200 live on All Pro Broadcasting. Here tonight, we are live from Brooklyn, Michigan, 
This is a 200 lap race here. The Surf Pro 200. Surf Pro has the fastest response time to any disaster you will ever, ever have. We'll give you more details on Surf Pro, our wonderful, famous sponsor tonight. We will also give you more details tonight, fans, on how you can win that free pizza. Uh, joining me in the booth tonight, we have a very, very special guest. He is making his first appearance. We're going to cut him a little bit of slack. He is one of the best talented drivers in our Top Shelf Cup Series. Tanner Talrico, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing pretty good. Thanks for having me, guys. It'll be a fun one tonight. Yes, sir, Tanner. Why don't you give us a quick history of your racing, basically Domino's driver profile from your racing? Well, basically, I heard about TYJ um, last fall, and I was really interested in the whole thing. And as I did some research on it all, I found out that it was one of the better leagues to get into. And ever since, I've been hooked. I ran my first race at, I want to say, Charlotte last fall. Had a really good run and uh, made some really good friends that night. And it's stuck ever since. And now I'm really enjoying myself in the Top Shelf Series. And I'm looking forward to running out the rest of the season. Thank you so much, Tanner. Some quick facts you gave me earlier. You are from Charlotte, Michigan. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And uh, some of your uh, your team names, your sponsor names were Elif Brothers Roofing Unleashed Racing. Is that correct? Yep, and Fox Racing. And Fox Racing also. Uh, I'm going to say this because nobody wants to brag on themselves. You are actually a two-time USAC midget champion in the state of Michigan. Is that correct? Yes, sir, I am. 2008 and 2010. Awesome. And in 2016, is this right? You were a super stock champion? Yes, sir. That's uh, That was actually last fall. There's a local track near me called Spartan Speedway. It's a little quarter-mile bouldering located in Mason, Michigan. And uh, we ran all season last year, and it was my first full-time season ever in that car. And we were able to sweep the first few nights of racing and hold on the rest of the season against some really tough guys. And we squeaked out the championship by, I think, three points. And one last thing real quick. You have been and are a part-time ARCA race driver. Is that correct? Yep, I've, I've been fortunate enough in the past to uh, do some test driving for a couple teams here and there, actually one of which was at Michigan International Speedway, I want to say two years ago. Um, it was on the new surface, which is different than the guys are racing on tonight. But either way, um, having seat time at a track like Michigan uh, really play into the hands of how I can call from the booth. So I'm looking forward to it. I tell you what, fans, this is a unique opportunity. I drive a mail truck and put pieces of paper in metal boxes. My co-commentator tonight, Tanner Tyrico, he is an actual live real race car driver. We love to have that up in the booth. So he's going to come to you tonight, fans, with the perspective of knowing not only what it's like to race here in iRacing, but he's also got the real seat of the pants experience in real race cars. I tell you what, Tanner, uh, we're very, very thankful we ran across each other. You're part of our series, and we're also very thankful you're here in the booth with us tonight. What are you expecting here on our racing in this uh, Surf Pro 200 tonight at Michigan? Well, I think these guys are really going to be battling the track. It's a super abrasive track. Uh, tire wear is going to be very key to the whole entire race. The guys that can take care of their tires, mainly the right front, and not get tight on the long run, are going to be the guys that are going to be fast and are going to be around for the checkered flag. So. It'll be interesting to see who can really take care of that right front throughout the course of a run. And uh, like I said, whoever can is going to be fast all night long. All right, appreciate that. We have in the booth right now real quick for some updated track information. Joe Johnson. Joe, how you doing tonight? How's the track out there tonight? And what are your predictions for you yourself getting a win, but for these other drivers being able to manhandle this uh, abrasive track here at Michigan? Well, you know, we appreciate you having us in the booth. The... Uh... M&M's IRAPS uh, Xfinity Camry didn't do real well in qualifying. Uh, the car is real tight to start off with. Uh, the longer the run goes, it seems like when the fuel starts burning off, it starts loosening up. The track's real abrasive. It's going to eat up tires, and uh, I'll be looking to see whether or not uh, fuel comes into play tonight. Thank you so much, Joe. I tell you what, my prediction is, and uh, Tanner has his own predictions, and we're not going to call out names, but the winner of this race, in my opinion, is going to be the driver who can maintain, like Tanner just said, the right front tire, uh, keep the car out of the wall. They're gonna have to back up these corners and still maintain a lot of momentum, but uh, it's gonna be very exciting, and we're very happy all you fans are with us. Thank you so much, Joe. We'll uh, hopefully talk to you in Victory Circle. Yeah, 10-4, man. Uh, we hope to see you there. All right, Tanner, if you will go over, looks like the uh, 
guys have pretty much finished their qualifying runs. If you'll take like in the next minute and go over the uh, top 15, 20 starting lineup, that'd be awesome, Tanner. Yes, sir. On the pole in the number 81, that is Shane Parrish. Outside of him, it's Curtis Young in the 94. On the inside of row number two in the third position, that's William E. Moore in the 58. Out, outside of him in the number 48, that'll be Cody Griffin. Rounding out the top five is Jeff T. Martin in number 15. Outside of him, it's going to be Kyle Kamer in the number 51. Starting in seventh in the number 17, that's going to be Gary Sexton. Outside of him in the number 85, that's going to be Judd Danielson. Inside of row number five, that's going to be the number 89 of Gio Bramante. And outside of him in the number 35, that's going to be Gerald Campbell. Starting 11th tonight is going to be the number 62 of Ellery, Ellery Queen. And outside of him, former winner in the series this season is going to be Josh Bonwell. Starting 13th tonight in the number 14 is going to be Gary Weston. And outside of him in the number 98, that's going to be Andrew Kessler. Starting 15th tonight, oh, I think he just blinked out a little bit. That's going to be the three of Mark Jackson. Outside of him in the number 42, starting 16th, that's David Wright. Starting 17th tonight, that's going to be Sean Kalist in the number 45. And outside of him in the number 67, that's going to be Mark McFadden. Starting in 19th, our in-race reporter, that's Joe Johnson in the number 83. Outside of him in the number 07, that's Tyler Chalk. Starting in 21st tonight, that's going to be Jeffrey Ford in the number 21. And outside of him, Eric Stanford in the number 24. Ray Richer in the number 44 is going to start 23rd, and outside of him in the number one machine, that's James Somke. Starting in the 25th position tonight, in the number 420 is Russ Coe. Outside of him in the number nine, that's Chad Payne. Starting 27th tonight, deeper into the field in the number 27, or excuse me, the 072. Starting 27th is Ivan Garcia. Starting 28th in the number 36, that's Michael Fravert. Outside of him in the number 78, Donald Stewart, starting 29th. William Davis in the number 11 will be starting 30th. Behind him, starting 31st, that's Jack Watts in the number 66. Starting in the back of the pack tonight, your points, your points leader is going to have some work to do. Uh, that's Nick Reynolds in the number 10 machine. And Jeremy Crandall is going to round out the field starting 33rd in the number 73. It looks like we're coming around to get to green. Thank you so much. That's an awesome job. I'll tell you what, if you want to take the uh, green flag here, I'll let you cover the first lap, how the leaders get through the first turn. Absolutely. Well, it looks like the pace car is getting ready to dive off pit road. Here they come down to the line. It looks like Shane Parrish is going to jump off to the lead early and get a real good jump. Curtis Young's trying his hardest to keep up with him as they head towards turn number one here. Coming up through the gears, should be grabbing about fourth gear right about now. It looks for the most part everybody's starting to spread out and looks like the action's going to be right around the top five. Thank you so much, Tanner. It does look like back there in fourth position. We got side by side between. Oh, we got a spin already? Yep, we got a wreck on the back already. Come on. Looks like we're staying green as we speak. So if you keep. The yellow flag is out actually right now. Uh, Tanner and fans. We'll get that replay pulled up as soon as we can. Looks like the three of Mark Jackson had some issues. Who else did you see there, Tanner? Uh, it looks as though the number 42 machine may have gotten a little bit of help from the number 14 of Gary Weston coming off the two. It almost looks as though maybe Gary got a little tight coming off the corner and just barely washed up into the 42. Uh, got him sideways and kind of swept Mark up in the process of it. Not a whole lot Mark could do there except take a base of action and hope for the best. Yeah, appreciate that, Tanner. We are pulling the replay up. <clears throat> That's exactly what it looks like. 
these drivers are trying to get every single ounce out of their car, even on this very first lap. And it looks like that's exactly what happened. Uh, those two drivers, unfortunately, got uh, took out. I'm not sure how much damage they got, Tanner. Were you able to notice that they got a lot of damage? But they're going to be able to continue on. Uh, look, for the most part, uh, I think Mark Jackson got the real front end of the whole thing. It looks like he got some pretty substantial right front fender damage. Uh, the 42 machine, I didn't see a whole lot on him. Maybe a little bit on the left rear corner of the David Wright machine. And I'm not sure who got into him. I'm pretty sure it was, uh, I want to say, Gary Weston. Uh, I'm not real sure he got a whole lot of damage out of it. They just barely touched. I think for the most part he should be okay. Thank you so much, Tanner. Are any drivers in the front of the pack taking this opportunity to make any pit stops, or is everybody staying out? Uh, I believe I saw some takers towards the back of the pack. Um, uh, looks like the first one that came down pit road was the 07 of Tyler Chalk to come down for four fresh tires. Um, a lot of these guys, it looks like, are coming down for, looks like four tires. Probably a lot of them just playing it safe. The uh, guys that were behind that wreck trying to make sure they didn't run over any virtual debris or anything along those lines. And uh, just play it safe so early on in the race. Gotcha. I tell you what, that's a good idea. If you're a little bit further back in the pack. And you get a little bit of opportunity to come in and get some uh, new tires. <clears throat> we may have a whole long green flag run coming up here in just a minute. So the guys uh, back at the pack getting four fresh tires, that could help. Oh, absolutely. We're going to talk about it all night. Tire wear tonight is going to be huge. Uh, one of the things that I say to a lot of guys is racing on this track, especially on this cold surface, it is like racing on seems like like 80 grit sandpaper it just heats the tires up um even one corner even though they weren't up to speed one corner uh will will show a difference in tire wear so a lot of these guys that came down and took four tires right now watch at the end of the run they might be able to slice and dice their way up to the field a little bit better than these guys that stayed out okay so uh if you have a good idea on it there tanner uh hopefully you do exactly what position on this restart, do we have the drivers with a brand new tire so we can follow them through the field on the restart? Um, I believe the first car on new tires is Tyler Chalk in the 07. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's restarting in the 20th spot. Uh, it's a little deep in the field, a little deeper than I would like to be on fresh tires, but then again, it is early on in the race, and I think he's going to have plenty of time to make that up. Yeah, this is always a gamble, uh, fans. Come down pit road, get four brand new Goodyear tires, put you back in the pack. But like I said, if we have a long green flag run, that could absolutely pay off a little bit later in the race. If the whole race goes uh, across the tree, which we hope it does, uh, the guys with the brand new tires right now will definitely have the advantage. Real quick, while the drivers are going down the back stretch, I want to give everybody uh, a couple quick information points. This is the Surf Pro 200 fans <coughs> and drivers. If you ever have any kind of emergency in your home, you have a hot water heater, go out and flood your upstairs, you have a hurricane, tornado, you name it, Surf Pro has the fastest response time to any disaster you will ever have. Call 1-800-SURF-PRO and they will be at your door to help you out with your disaster. I'll let you take this restart. Go ahead, Tanner. Well, here we go. We're going back green. Round two, Shane Parrish, same thing we saw on the first restart. Gets up through the gears really nice. He's going to pull... I believe that's Curtis Young on the inside of him as they head turns towards turn number one. And it looks like the first battle we're going to see is I believe that's Cody Griffin in the 48. Looking up, oh, he's actually peeking to the inside of Curtis Young in the middle of one and two. Uh, not sure the bottom side. Oh, wow. Yeah, it looks like, uh, yeah, I think, yeah, it looks like Shane Ferris uh, got tight, had to get out of the gas. Curtis Young gets around him for the lead. And we got Cody, uh, <laughs> the 48 looking on the inside of Curtis Young now. Yeah, this is a crazy little hornet's nest we got up front. These guys are racing really, really hard for being this early in the race. Honestly, I'm kind of surprised. Uh, I thought they'd be given a lot more room than this, but hey, these are the guys in the Xfinity Series. They know what they're doing, and uh, it'll be fun to watch. Yeah, it's Cody Griffin. Excuse me for that. He's in that number 48. He has made his way past Curtis Young, who is the defending 
Dominus TYJ Racing, the Independent Track Champion, although Curtis is looking back on the inside right now, the 48 of uh, Cody Griffith, he's looking on the back stretch to make it uh, too wide going into the, uh, oh, and he just barely touches him. Oh, I think he's sideways in the middle of three and four. He hangs onto it, always free again. Will he save it? He will, he's gonna drop back quite a bit, but what a save by Cody. I really thought he was up in no man's lane. Once you get up there high in that loose stuff, it's kind of hard to hang on to it. Cody did a phenomenal job holding on to that one. Yeah, that was an incredible job. They did make a little bit of contact. I tell you what, unfortunately, I think these guys are going to have some serious contact from time to time on almost every corner here because these Xfinity cars are a handful. Oh, yeah. Thankfully, I believe both drivers escaped that little incident there with a minimal to no damage. Uh, that might have been a little bit of net code, but I do see just a little bit of damage on uh, Curtis Young's right front fender. Uh, that may hurt him in the long run. This is a pretty aero-sensitive track because the speeds are so high. But um, right now it looks like he's still out front running strong. Absolutely. Yeah, I think they just barely got together. And uh, looking at it, it does look like it could have been a little bit of net code. That is one of those uh, scenarios in our racing where the cars get real close together. They don't technically touch, but the uh, computer shows them it's touching, and that will make one car go to the outside or lose control. That's exactly what just happened. Yep, and now the field's going to start to string out a little bit. And for the most part, everybody's single file. Uh, looks like the first real battle we're going to be having is right back around the Looks like the 12th to 13th spot between the number 56 of Josh Bonwell and the number 62 of Ellery Queen. Uh, looks like Ellery's actually making the high side work. That's uh, that's kind of a surprise early on in this one. Usually, fresh tires on the short run are going to prove to be faster on the bottom. But as the run goes on and the tires wear out, uh, the top's really going to become the preferred line throughout the run. So, as the run goes on, Look for guys to try to work in the second and third group here. Yeah, thank you so much, Sir Tanner. And fans, you are listening to a real race car driver. So the advice he's telling you, the analyzation of this race he's giving you, it's coming from somebody who has been in the race car. He's had his butt in the seat. He knows exactly what the car feels like, especially here at Michigan, right, uh, Tanner? So you can give the fans real life experience of what it feels like racing these cars at these speeds or close to them and what it actually happens when the tires wear off on this abrasive surface. Oh, it's crazy. I've always told people uh, I've been rather fortunate to be able to come here and run uh, a couple different times, but once you get over about the 150 mile an hour barrier, things start to totally take on a whole different perception. And uh, when the tires start wearing out, that's when things start getting really, really interesting. You have to change your, your lift points and your brake points. You have to change your steering input. Like I said, you're probably going to have to move up the track a little bit and search for grip. You hear guys talk about it all the time on dirt. They have to push the cushion, uh, get to the wet dirt, get where the grip's at. In a way, pavement's the same way. Once the track starts heating up, you're going to want to try to find where the, where the cool spots are at. That's where the grip's going to be at. And uh, right now, everybody running about that one groove off the bottom line. Uh, I'm surprised it hasn't heated up a little more than it has, and guys haven't started moving up already. So be prepared to start seeing that second and third groove come into play. Yeah, I tell you what, the experience I do know is the drivers in our series, uh, Tanner, who can take care of their equipment. Oh, they can well, hard coming off the two. He's on the apron. Oh, what a save by Curtis Young. Sorry, David. Er, Robert, that's fine. Hey, no problem. Hey, no problem. We're working together the first time. Fans definitely forgive us. Uh, that's a great call. The uh, 94 of Curtis Young, absolutely. He had some issues there. And uh, he was able to save it. And that's definitely giving everybody else an opportunity to get by him. Yeah, that's going to bunch the field right back up, actually. Gio Bramante came out of nowhere right there. Just kind of... Was in the capper and see when that all unfolded. Uh, everybody lost their momentum, and it looks like Gio kept his foot in it and was able to slice and dice up through there. And he finds himself sitting in the lead right now. Uh, I believe that's I want to say Jeff T. Martin behind him. Yes, and uh, who was your leader one lap ago coming off the two now finds himself just oh cautions out again. Yeah. Yes, sir, Tanner. We'll get that replay pulled up real quick. Back to that earlier incident. I tell you what, the 94 of Curtis Young 
That car was almost 45 degrees sideways. He was somehow able to save it down the back stretch. He lost a lot of positions. And we'll get the current replay up as soon as we can. What did you see there as far as who was involved there, Tanner? It looks like the 072 of Ivan Garcia, and I want to say the number one machine. Uh, I'm trying to find it on my replay right now. Oh, it looks like it was coming off turn number two. Um, I believe the number one machine got kind of free coming off a of two, and he had the nine car right behind him, and he was just trying to check up and uh, kind of ran out of racetrack, got up into the safer barrier a little bit. Uh, it looks like the one machine got clipped by the 42, <laughs> who's already involved in one tonight kind of having a rough night um swept up a couple others and the one car got into the inside wall it looks like pretty hard yes fans thank you so much it definitely looks like the one the number nine and also the number 42 were involved here uh this track you're trying to get every line you can every advantage coming down the back stretch going forward and it definitely looks like the number nine got in the back of the number one. Who's in that Kellogg's? Uh, looks like Chevrolet. Or is that a Toyota? Looks like a Chevrolet Camaro. And uh, 42 got involved. Unfortunate for the 42 of David Wright. Unfortunate for the one of James Somke. Uh These guys are going to have some serious damage. Although I don't think there's maybe, you know, it's not going to end the race. But definitely going to put them way back in the field there, Tanner. Yeah, absolutely. This place is so aero-sensitive, any kind of damage is probably going to hurt you down the straightaway. But, just as we say that, uh, looks like the whole entire field is going to bring them down pit road, led by the number 89 Gio Bromante, and uh, the race off pit road. I believe that's Jared Campbell in the number 35. Uh, phenomenal stop, got him out P1, and I believe, for the most part, everybody on pit road took two tires. Uh, like we were saying, Tires are going to be the key all night, and uh, I don't believe we'll see many two-tire stops unless we get a really short run, uh, maybe late in the race, kind of like we did at the start. For the most part, I think all the stops tonight will be four-tire stops. Yeah, thank you, Tanner. Yes, on this caution flag, we're going to bring up a driver for a quick interview. While we're waiting, it looks like we have our leader now, Gio Bramante. We're going to pull over for a real quick interview if we can get a hold of him. I know he is definitely involved there. He's probably talking to his crew chief as far as the restart goes. But Gio, do we have you in the uh, the broadcast booth? We got a couple quick questions for you. You're up to first position, Gio. You started ninth. How's your race going? Uh, it's going great. Uh, I'm just working on saving tires and just keeping my nose clean and going home with no damage and just win the race. Yes, sir. You're another real race driver in the real world of racing. When is your next real world race and exactly what kind of car do you race? And have you ever raced on the Michigan Oval? Uh, my next race is next week at uh, Montgomery Speedway. Um, I race super late model for David Gill in racing. And, uh, yeah, this helps me a lot uh, through my race career. It kind of just gives me a heads up where I'm going to be on the track and just helps me. Yes, sir. So have you ever actually done a real race at Michigan? If not, when do you anticipate driving a real race car on this real racetrack at Michigan in your future? Um, it'd probably be in a couple of years in the truck series. Um. Yeah. Awesome. Good to hear from you, uh, Geo. We wish you all the luck. Good luck tonight. Hopefully, we'll talk to you in Victory Circle. Okay. Thank you. All right, Tanner, if you go through the uh, top ten on this restart. Yes, sir. It looks like, uh, like we said, Jared Campbell got a great stop and took the lead coming off pit road right there. Geo is going to wind up second. Jeff T. Martin third. Shane Paris fourth. And Cody Griffin will round out, round out the top five. Uh, you'll have William Moore starting sixth, Judd Danielson seventh, uh, Kyle Kamer eighth, Gary Sexton ninth, and Josh Bonwell in tenth. Green flag's back out, though, and it looks like uh, Jared Campbell's going to extend his lead by about two car lengths entering turn number one. Uh, the field's going to spread out behind him. Doesn't look like there's any real contact that I can see, but 
here comes Cody Griffin working the bottom off turn number two. We saw him earlier in the race get really sideways in three and four. Uh, it didn't seem to affect that car too much because he's right back up in the thick of it. Thank you so much, Tanner. This is very exciting here. Gerald Campbell is back to the lead. Like you just said, looks like Gerald started back in the 10th position with pit strategy. He's up to the lead. Right behind him, we do have Gio Vermonte in that number 89. Jeff T. Martin in the 15. Cody Griffin in the 48. We got Shane Pierce running the fifth in that number 81. We also have William A. Moore running sixth in that number 58. And fans, pardon me for not mentioning it so far, but at lap 50, that's the uh, cutoff for you to get your free pizza pick in. This is how it works, fans. Real simple. We do this every single Wednesday, Thursday, and Sunday night. All you have to do, fans, is text 919-883-7497. You pick which driver you think will win this race before lap 50. The first fan who can accurately predict the winner of this race before lap 50 will win a free, large, three-topping pizza carry-out only. We do not bring these pizzas to your house in the Xfinity car or the Denny Fender truck or the Top Shelf Cup car, not even in the Renegade Dirt Series car. So you got to go to the store and pick it up, but you will win the free pizza. And uh, the first fan to get that before lap 50 will win that free pizza. And it uh, looks like we had some instants on the track. We stay green. Uh, Tanner, what did you see? Uh, from what I saw, the first lap after that restart, it looked like it was Mark Jackson in the number three machine. <laughs> Just not having the greatest start to his race so far tonight. Uh, looks like he got into turn number one. Maybe made a little bit of contact with number 62, Ellery Queen. Actually, that was definitely net code getting into turn number one. Heavy net code, holy cow. Uh, the free car got sent up the track, kept it off the wall, but had to check up just enough to where I believe that was the number 07 that Tyler Chalk got into the back. A little bit of damage in the nose of the 07, but uh, Mark Jackson seems to be a little bit off the pace tonight now that he's got a lot of damage. Hopefully he can get that fixed up and get back up in the second bit. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, Tanner. How's it looking up front? Who is leading and who has got the best chance to get around the leader? Well, right now it's all the 35 machine and Campbell out front. You know, I think Gio, uh, we haven't had a super long run yet in this race, but I think Gio's got a, quite a bit of horsepower underneath the hood of that Toyota. Um, behind him is Cody Griffin. We know he's quick. Uh, I mean, he came back from a slide, but then just a matter of laps was all the way back up inside the top five. So I think. Uh, I think Cody Griffin and Gio and Gerald are going to be uh, pretty tough to beat tonight. And it just so happens that they're running one, two, three. Um, I'm trying to see where our closest battle is on the track. It looks like it's for fifth between Jeff Martin and Shane Parrish. Looks like Shane's just kind of biding his time right now. Uh, he's got about a car length gap to the back bumper of Jeff. And it looks like they may have just calmed their battle down right now. For the most part, it looks like everybody's single filing out starting to work the a little bit higher group not quite as high as the second group but moved up a little bit since the start of the race thank you there tanner and as far as some of the biggest movers so far tonight fans we got gerald campbell like we said he's leading the race he started 10th we're going to kind of take a few minutes here to go through the field we're going to try to get some uh of these drivers and they're great great paint jobs on their cars tonight it looks like Gerald Campbell is in that number 35 Ford Mustang GT it is absolutely the brand new version of the Mustang GT yes sir. behind them in the 89 that's that's Gio Gio Bramante in the number 89 uh, David Gimling Racing, Toyota Camry. I believe he's also co-sponsored by Vermonte Landscape and Design. Yes, sir. Driving for Aegis Motorsports. Awesome, awesome. And real quick, back to the front. Um, Gerald Campbell is in that McDonald's Ford Mustang, if I'm not seeing uh, incorrectly. Is that right, Tanner? Yeah, that's uh, that's a McDonald's Ford Mustang. Yes, sir. And third, we have Cody Griffin, that number 48. If you don't remember, fans, just a few laps ago, he had some net code incident with the uh, 94 uh, he lost quite a few positions. He's moved back all the way up to third position. Uh, the sponsor on his car, his Chevrolet Camaro, is what do you see there, Tanner? 
I believe that's the Trax Tavern, if I'm reading that correctly. It's the Trax Tavern and Proximity Motor Cars. Yes, sir. That's an awesome paint job on Cody Griffin, number 48. He is one of our newer drivers. He has tried to make more and more headway into our Xfinity Series. He has been up front for many races. It's good to see him run third. And fourth, we have the Jeff T. Martin, atopgamers.com, Chevrolet Camaro. He is always one, always making a threat here for the win. He's running in that fourth position. Behind him, we have Shane Parrish in that Surf Pro, number 81. And uh, under green, we're not going to get a chance to talk to him, but under the next caution, we're going to try to get a quick word with Shane Parrish. He is the owner of the Great Vine, Texas location of Surf Pro. Again, fans, Surf Pro, if you ever have any kind of issues with your home, damage-wise, water-wise, tornado, hurricane, flood, you name it, um, water heater overflowing, you want to call 1-800-SURF-PRO. They have the fastest response time to any disaster of anybody out there. But uh, Shane Pierce is that Toyota. He is running up in the fifth position. Oh, real quick, uh, Robert, looks like you got a wreck on the back. No caution. Yes, sir. Who's involved in that? Uh, I'm trying to catch up to him right now. They both slid down to the inside wall. Uh, it doesn't look like they really hit anything too hard. Um, I believe that was the 73 of Jeremy Crandall coming off of two. I believe the 24 got into the wall a little bit. Probably just got a little bit tight. Uh, 73 was right on his bumper. Couldn't really do anything about it. Um, 73 did make a little bit of contact with the inside wall. I don't believe it'll be anything too bad. Uh, the was the car that got into the outside wall. Yeah, we're looking at the roof there right now. It definitely looks like the uh, 73 of uh, Jeremy Crandall. Actually, in front of him, the 24 Billiards, excuse me. That would be the ESBilliards.com 24 of Eric Stafford. Like we said earlier there, uh, Tanner, these cars are going to get tight. That's exactly what happened to the 24 Mustang GT of Eric Stafford. He got into the wall. Obviously, he lost a lot of momentum. Jeremy Crandall had nowhere to go, got right into him, and that's been a both spinning down to the inside wall. Yes, sir, and while all that was going on, back up front, I believe there was a lead change. Looks like Gio Bermonte got to the inside of Gerald Campbell coming off turn number four and is now the leader, actually. The 35 machine has dropped back to third, and Cody Griffin has been able to take up the runner-up spot. And uh, I think I think what's going on is we're starting to see how guys can push their cars pretty hard and uh, push them to the point where they have big-time tire fall-off. And the guys that are saving tires, this is about the time in the run where they're going to start coming to the top and the cream's going to rise. Uh, just, it's got to make me wonder, maybe Gio was back there watching the leaders out in front of him, maybe, I want to say, burn up their stuff a little bit while Gio was saving his, and right now he's burning his up, and he's uh, starting to extend his lead a little bit over Cody Griffin. I tell you what, that's exactly what these drivers are going to have to be able to do to pull, pull off a victory here in the Sur Pro 200, live on All Pro Broadcasting here at Michigan. By the way, fans... Uh, we will remind you how to win a free pizza, but right now we remind you how to get the free alert. I know everybody is busy. you got family obligations. You've got job obligations. You might have a car breakdown tomorrow morning. Who knows what you got going on Sunday. But if you never want to miss your next chance to win the free large three-topping Domino's Pizza, all you have to do, fans, is click the subscribe button on all pro broadcasting if you're watching this race right now live whether it's on your device on your computer on your phone we are thankful you're here if you click the subscribe button to all pro broadcasting you will get the alert every time we have a race which is every wednesday night thursday night and sunday night at 8 50 p.m eastern you don't even have to worry about it the alert will come on it will remind you hey tune in pick your driver you get a chance to win free pizza and you probably got about a 1 out of 15, 1 out of 25 chance to win the free pizza. We've given away about 25 pizzas this year already. We're probably going to give away another 25 pizzas before November 15th, maybe 35. So if you want one of those free pizzas, and I hope you do, I had Domino's Pizza for lunch today and wings because I love Domino's Pizza. Obviously, you can understand that. Make sure you click the subscribe button on All Pro Broadcasting. That way you get the automatic alert. Every time we have a race going on, you don't even have to worry about it. What do you see up front there, Tanner? Uh, right now, it still looks like Gramante is still out front pace in the field. Uh, Cody Griffin falling off of him just a little bit, but the real battle right now is for the third position. 
Uh, Shane Parrish has now been able to get around the 35 of Gerald Campbell as well, and now it looks like the 58 of William E. Moore is also looking to the inside headed down the back. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if he can make the inside work down here right now since the tires are getting wore out. Um, maybe the 35 can battle back on the top. Oh, well, maybe not. Uh, the 58 is going to be able to hold on to that position, and it looks like push the 35 machine to fit. I tell you what, that's a great battle up front. We also have a great battle back here. It looks like for 7th, 8th, ninth between Josh Bonwell, Kyle Cameron, Jeff T. Martin. These guys are battling door to door. They're trying to get every position they can. We were going through the field earlier in the race before that last caution. It looks like uh, Kyle was in that number 51 Ford Mustang GT. He is running in eighth. He started all the way back, uh, actually up front in sixth. So he's lost a few positions. Could be pit strategy. He might have stayed out there. In front of him, we have Josh Bonwell. He's always a track favorite. Obviously, his mother, Thela Bonwell, is pulling for him. Every single race, she has yet to win the free pizza, but I tell you what, I would bet you a dime to a dollar. Josh Bonwell's going to be adventure lane before you know it. He's in that 56 Ford Mustang GT running in the 8th position. We got Judd Danielson. Uh, he's all the way up to 7th. He's got a great new paint scheme on his truck. Uh, excuse me, his uh, Xfinity car. Uh, Tanner, you can confirm this with me. Looks like the Food Lion Winston Chevy Camaro. Is that correct? Yes, sir. That's actually a really nice looking machine. I really like that a lot. I tell you what, that's the first time I've seen uh, Judd racing that paint scheme no bull and he i tell you one thing i know judd danielson from way back and he does not put <laughs> this kind of bull you race him too hard he doesn't <laughs> no he doesn't you give him any kind of hard time on the track you give him any kind of hard time on the phone facebook he will absolutely let you know how it is he will set you straight so this is a perfect paint job for the number 85 <laughs> Of Judd Danielson. He is all the way up to seventh position. He's having a great run tonight. Like I said, we've got uh, Josh Bank, Bonwell on that pad. Ford Mustang GT in eighth. In ninth, we have Kyle Cameron, that 51 Mustang GT. What spots are you see on his car there, Tanner? I'm sorry, what was that, Robert? Yeah, what? Yeah, I'm sorry. What sponsor do you see on uh, Kyle Cameron in that 51? I believe Kyle tonight is in the Interstate Batteries uh, toy or Ford Mustang. Uh, yes, sir. Seems That's like what he, Kyle's pretty, pretty into the whole interstate batteries thing. I know when he runs with us in uh, the Top Shell Series that um, he runs the interstate batteries. I believe it's an old Bobby Labonte paint scheme. And every time I'm around it on track, it sticks out like a sore thumb because it's so bright. And uh, he's changing up tonight, putting the black and green on there tonight. And I actually like that a lot. It's a good-looking car. It sure is. We have uh, Andy Kessler in the 11th position at number 98 Ford Mustang GT. Behind him in 12th, we have William Davis. He's running in that Chevrolet Camaro. He's trying to make a move right now on the inside. Looks like a Andy Kessler. Actually, he does get around 80. Excuse me for that. I'm a couple seconds behind. Well, I'll tell you what. The one guy I've been watching a lot lately is uh, Josh Bonwell in that number 58. Uh, I think he's going to be one of those guys that's been saving his tires quite a bit. Um, the last couple laps, he hasn't been that far off the leader's pace, actually. I believe he's one of the only cars inside the top ten that's within just a couple tenths. So, uh, actually, that time by, it looks like Gio and him were, yeah, they were within a tenth of each other. And uh, I think Josh is going to be one you're going to have to deal with by the time this thing's over. i tell you what is very, very interesting here, uh, Tanner how these drivers, and this is almost, you can almost bank on it, you can put money on it, almost. These drivers in the Domino's TYJ Racing Series, I don't care if it's the uh, Dinner Defender Trucks, uh, Premier Xfinity, or Top Shelf Cup, we seem to have one, maybe two cautions in the first 10, 20 laps, and then these, these drivers kind of settle in, they realize, hey, I gotta get hold of this car, I gotta get hold of this truck, I gotta get hold of this track. And they settle into a long green flag run, which we're having right now. I'm not sure how many less we got on the tires right now. Uh, Tanner, you probably have that information. But these drivers have definitely been able to 
um, tone it down a little bit, find their groove, run their line, and they're getting the most out of their car if they can, and they are, they've been able to uh, save their tires as best they can, and at the end of this long green flag run, we're going to see who is the best at doing exactly that, saving their tires. Well, just as you bring that up, it looks like we had one taker on pit road, actually. We were just talking about him. Kyle Cameron, the number 51, uh, just brought that interstate batteries Mustang down pit road. Um, it's got to make me wonder, maybe the tires are starting to get to the point right now in the run, actually, where they're falling off to the point where maybe Kyle thinks that he can pit a little bit early and maybe short pit and not run these guys on the long run. Um, yeah, he's coming up through the field really quick right now on uh, fresh tires. Looks like he's looking at the inside of Bond while we were just talking about him, too. Yeah, it looks like Kyle is back. He is one lap down in 28. He started in sixth. So if he didn't have an issue, it definitely looks like he might have uh, come down pit road maybe two laps ago. But he has definitely got his fresh tires. And so what he's trying to do and what he's hoping for is for all these other drivers on the lead lap to uh, complete this green flag cycle and make their pit stops under green. He's gonna get two, three, maybe four laps advantage with brand new tires, and it will maybe pick him up quite a few positions from where he was running before he made that pit stop. We are here in the 44, the 246 of Jeffrey Ford, Ray Richard are coming down pit road, so we the pit road is, come, is becoming busy. I'm looking right now, it looks like quite a few drivers are coming off pit road. Yeah, right now, the first one I see is the, uh, I believe that's number 78 machine at Donald Stewart. He's headed off pit road right now. Um, Donald's actually inside the top five in points, looking to get a pretty consistent run. Um, as of right now, it looks like about mm, maybe a little under half the field's come down pit road and got fresh tires. So it'll be interesting to see by the time this whole thing cycles through. We, we were talking about Kyle being the first one on pit road. Um, by the time this thing cycles through, maybe he'll be able to pick up quite a few spots. Who knows? He might even be in the lead. This track uh, eats up tires so quick. Um, fresh tires is so big compared to old tires. He may just get to the lead. We'll have to wait and find out. Yes, sir. I'm following right now Cody Griffin in that seventh position, that number 48 Chevrolet Camaro. I'm live right, right with him. He's pulling his pit stall as we speak. That number 48 of Cody Griffin. He is in his pit stall complete. Right side's going up. He's getting two Goodyear Eagles on the right side. One can of Snooker Racing Fuel. Left side's going up. He's getting two left Goodyear Eagles and a second can of Snooker Racing Fuel. He is down and away right in front of him. He's actually going to pass William E. Moore. who had a pit stop there with four tires. William E. Moore is in that fly fight win for the Mustang GT. He's absolutely coming out of pit road on the bottom. He lost one position to Curry Griffith. What do you mean more? And he's up in seventh position right now. So these guys are definitely making their pit stops, Tanner. Oh, absolutely. I'm actually watching right now. I was just curious. It looks like um, it looks like Kyle Kamer actually is going to pick up quite a few spots. I don't. Yep. The leader's coming to pit road right now. Geo's headed on a pit road uh, as we speak. And as I said, tires are so big. Kyle, I believe, is actually going to cycle around to the lead uh, by the time this all plays out. Um, he's ahead of, I believe, yeah, he is ahead of Cody Griffin, and Cody was running second when pit stops uh, started taking place. So if he can hold off Cody uh, until things cycle through, I don't know, Cody's coming pretty hard. Um, if he can hold these guys off until this thing cycles through, Kyle might be able to lead a lap. Yeah, it looks right now uh, Cody's closed, closed right in on the back of Cameron, though, so... I'm thinking the 48 might be going to the lead here, really, actually. He's headed that way right now, coming down to the line. He might lead this lap. Thank you, Tanner. I'll tell you what, these green flag pit stops, this is where you make your money. Whether you're the crew chief, whether you're the uh, spotter for your team, whether you're the jack man, whether you're the gas man, you got to come in pit road perfect. you got to be a perfect driver on entry. You cannot slide through the pit stall. I just noticed the 58 and the 81, both Sean Parrish, William E. Moore, on that last pit stop one lap ago, they both slid through their pit stall. They had to back it up, cost them three, four seconds. Uh, other than that, I didn't see many other mistakes, but I tell you what, that's where you win the race or you lose the race. On pit road, a lot of times with these uh, Michigan races, these long tracks where we don't have a lot of cautions, you gotta be perfect on pit road. 
and the drivers who make a few mistakes on pit road, God bless them. I could never go down there and be perfect myself, so I don't give them any kind of criticism, but the drivers who win these races, this very, very, very competitive uh, Domino CYJ Racing Premier Xfinity Series are the drivers who have zero mistakes on pit road, coming to pit road, coming off the pit road, every single pit stop. That's what it takes your Tanner to win these races. You know very well in the Top Shelf Cup Series where you race, you got to have a flawless race from start to finish to win the race. Absolutely. Um, pit stops are really, really important no matter where you go. Uh, especially though, because the tire fall off is so big. Um, you just, I mean, we're talking when guys are on fresh tires out there and they're the first ones down pit road, it's not crazy to see these guys make up close to two seconds on the guys that are on old tires. So when you're coming to pit road, you want to try to get everything you can out of it. Uh, getting on the pit road hard, getting into your box hard, not sliding through like you said, Robert. Um, and you want to try to push, push pit road speed as far as you can, but you don't ever want to hop that edge because in just a matter of seconds, if you speed for just... 10 feet, it could end your race just like that. And uh, you can go from having a really good day to a really bad day really quick. Thank you, Tanner. I want to remind the fans real quick, you have one lap. I'll give you one extra lap to lap 51 to get your picks in for the free pizza. All you have to do, fans, to win a free, large, three-topping Domino's Pizza carryout only is text 919-883-7497 or if you're watching on the live chat on your device, say, I picked this driver to win. I'll give you a lap 51 instead of 50. Get your pick in. That way you can get your pick in. The first fan to accurately predict to win this race in one lap, lap 51. we got about a lap and a half now. <clears throat> if you're not a Domino's employee, and if you're not a Domino's TYJ Racing member, you are eligible to win that free pizza. We gave one away Sunday night. Hopefully we have another one away uh, tonight. So make sure you get your pick in. I'm following with Joe Johnson right now. He came down pit road. He's coming off pit road as we speak. It looks like he's in sixth position. Who else up front who has not made a stop yet? Tanner, you can tell. Um, well, Jared, or Jared, like you said, just came down pit road. Uh, the one that, oh, we actually almost lost it getting into turn one. Uh, the one that I can see right now that hasn't come down pit road yet is the number 36 of Michael Freiberg. And uh, he was really struggling hanging on to the car through one and two, so I would not be surprised if he's bringing it down here either this lap or the next lap. Um, either way, he's going to have to pretty soon because these guys are getting to the extreme edge of the fuel window. So uh, by the time this whole thing cycles through, the Cody Griffin should get cycled around to the lead. Um, yes, sir. It looks like the uh, 36 City Toyota of uh, Michael Fravert. One of our famous favorite veteran drivers is down pit road right now, Tanner. If you don't mind, fans, I'm going to follow him on pit road. He's coming down. He's sliding into spit box. Hopefully he does that perfectly. It looks like he comes to a good stop. The right sides are going up. He's getting two brand new Goodyear Eagle tires as one can of snooker race crew goes in on the left side. Left side goes up. He's getting two left side brand new Goodyear Eagle tires. Second can of snooker field. He's out. That is one of the fastest pit stops I've seen in a long time, Tanner. Hopefully that will help him out because he was one of the last cars to come down pit road, which could hurt him very much. Yeah, that's the only real thing that uh, kind of scares me about staying out too long. There's a there's a certain window uh, in the green flag pit stops, no matter what series you're in, where the tires fall off. You don't ever want to be the absolute first one on pit road, but you never want You definitely don't ever want to be the last guy on pit road. That means that you were out on those old tires the longest, everybody else was on fresh tires, and the whole time you were out there on old tires, they were gaining time on you on fresh ones. So, actually, you see right here, it looks like Cody Griffin's gonna pass the 36, and uh, I believe put him a lap down. Um, perfect example, I believe it was the 35, stayed out a little bit longer, um, and it's, by the time this whole thing cycles through, which I believe it has by now, I think the 36 was the last car to close out the cycle. Um, 35 of Gerald Campbell is going to find himself a little bit further back than uh, he was running prior to the pit stops. Yeah, thank you so much, Tanner. We are still in a very long green flag run. Hopefully, fans, you got your picks in. Right now, we're going to do another couple of quick Domino's driver profiles. Michael Domenico, hopefully you can help me out here. We've got one of our favorite veteran drivers, Russ Coe, in the number 420. He has been with us for many, many races going on almost two years now. Russ Coe 
is a very talented driver. He is also a very talented musician. That's right. Michael, I don't know if you've got any way to pull up one of his songs in the background here. If you do, great. If you don't, no big deal. Russ Coe drops number 420, Mustang GT. It is a trailer trash lot. 420 Mustang GT. Everybody's thinking, where do you get that name? Well, that's his uh, group name. Russ is from Cape Canaveral, Florida. His sponsors are a trailer trash lot 420. He's been in sim racing for three years. He does not have any real world racing, but he does a really good job here. Most every race he's in, he stays out of the way. He gets a good finish no matter what he's got to do. He wants to give special thanks to his wife and crew. Chief, excuse me, his wife and crew chief, Raylene, Domino CYJ Racing. I'm not going to mention myself. He wants to give thanks to. He also wants to give special thanks to Off-Road Broadcasting, Michael Domenico, for all the awesome sponsors and the races that uh, Michael and Off-Road Broadcasting is putting on. He did sponsor a race a few weeks back. He has a whole live track of music you can download. You can either go to <coughs> iTunes, you know, the Walmart.com um, music, or many other venues to get his music. I tell you what, we're happy to have Rusko as one of our drivers here, and he's got some really incredible sounds, really incredible music. He does a lot of live performances down there in Florida, um, opening for a lot of other, other bands. I tell you what, you would not expect an iRacing or an NASCAR driver to have a whole other career as a musician. Not only a musician, but a musician who has been published, who's been approved on um, iTunes, on YouTube, He's got a whole album out there, and he actually does live performances with hundreds of people watching. So I'm happy and thankful to know Rusko. And he's uh, holding on to his Mustang G tonight. It's a beautiful paint job. He's running in 25th right where he started. Good to see Rusko in the race tonight. Yes, sir. And back up front, it looks like the 48 of Cody Griffin is just set and sail on the field. It looks like him and actually William E. Moore, uh, they've... They've, op they've opened up pr quite a big gap over third place Kyle Kamer. Uh, it looks like it's about four seconds right now uh, from Kamer all the way up to Griffin in the lead. Uh, so the mo for the most part, it's uh, pretty much a single file show here at MIS. And uh, it'll be interesting to see. Maybe we'll get another green flag pit stop. And maybe some guys will short pit that are running uh, back in like the sixth or seventh position and be able to hop their way up towards the top three and maybe some guys in the front. Uh, we'll stay out a little bit longer like we saw in the first run, and maybe they'll drop back a few spots. i tell you what, Camp, uh, Kyle. Sorry, Tanner. My bad. <laughs> Everybody, excuse me. I'm working with a lot of folks. Uh, we just saw, and you were just talking about the driver watch, Mark Fravor. He was one of the last drivers to stay out on those tires. He came down pit road, uh, Tanner, and you were talking about how much that would put you in a deficit. Tanner, excuse me, Michael Fravor stayed out. I think he might have loaded a lap or two. He was one of the last ones coming down pit road. He got those brand new tires, but he's running back in 22nd position. He just hit the wall. He saved it. Beautiful save there <laughs> after he hit the wall, but uh, he is running in 22nd position. First car, one lap down. He qualified in 28th, and I know Michael. He is one of the favorite brothers. We have Michael and Mark. I don't think Mark's in the race tonight, but Michael is one of those guys who starts in the back. He always makes precision decisions with his, with his uh, crew chief, spotter, and he comes down and makes uh, adjustments on his car, and he usually ends up in the top five, if not the top three. Unfortunately, I think staying up that long, Joe Tanner hurt him. Absolutely hit the wall, definitely hurt him. Yeah, I thought for a second, uh, I was watching that with you, I thought for a second he was going to be in no man's land. He did a heck of a job holding on to that thing. I, I thought he hit the wall a lot harder than he did, but at second glance, it really doesn't look like he hurt his car that bad. It looks like he's got a little bit of right rear quarter panel damage that he picked up from that wreck and maybe a little bit just behind the right front tire. Um, but he did a heck of a job holding on to that thing. I thought he was going to be a goner for a second. I tell you what, most drivers, like myself, if I'd have done that, I'd have been a goner. So these drivers that are actually racing tonight, well, it looks like we got four wide almost right behind him. 
Yeah, I'm watching that as well. Looks like we got Kyle Kamer stuck. For, well, he was stuck right in the middle of three wide. He had the number 11 machine of William Davis on his inside, and uh, I believe that was the 24 of Eric Stanford outside of him. And just ahead of those guys is Curtis Young in the 94. Uh, he's running fourth right now. It'll be interesting to see if maybe he can cut and slice his way back to the front. We know he's been quick. Uh, started on the front row, I believe. And um, it'll be crazy to see if he can get back up to the front. Yeah, I tell you what, when we have these long green flag runs, it does look like we have another car coming down pit road. I think that could be uh, Michael Fravor getting some damage repaired. But back up front, these drivers in the top five, like you just mentioned, they are trying to slice and dice their way. When you have a long green flag run like we're doing right now, um, Tanner, you know from experience, way more than I know, that um, you get spread out, you get stretched out. So if you're back in 10th, 15th, 20th, you know, you're gonna have your work cut out for you. Heck, if you're even in fifth position, you're gonna have a hard time. We were just talking about Curtis Young. He started on the uh, front row there, like you just said. He was racing that uh, number 94 Chevrolet Camaro. He's got a little bit of right rear damage. He's running in fifth, but he's going to have to have a whole lot of uh, pit strategy go his way or another caution to get back up to the front. But I tell you what, Curtis Young has definitely got what it takes to win this race if he can get back up to the front. If we do not have a caution, I'm afraid it could be too, too late and too, too little too late. Yeah, Curtis is definitely a wheel man. I've raced with him quite a few times in the Top Shelf Series, and I know that he's got it in him. Uh, he's got it in him to make it back up to the front if the right cards follow his way. But right now I'm watching up front. It looks like William E. Moore is just barely, just a couple couple hundreds of lap cutting into Cody Griffin's lead. And I know William, he's, uh, he's pretty good on the long run. I actually raced against him last night in the Truck Series at Auto Club, Michigan's sister track. And... Uh, I was running up front for the majority of the race, as was William, and I know on the long run he was really able to be quick, so I would not be surprised if William can get up and challenge Cody for the lead here in the next couple laps. I tell you what, William has definitely already got one win. If my memory serves me correct, they're um, Tanner Talrico. Yep. He dominated back at Kansas in the Xfinity car. I mean, he came in there like he owned a joint. He, uh, yes, sir. You remember that race yourself. I don't, I don't, I don't know how he got, uh, what he got, but I tell you what, I watched the race. I called that race, and he dominated. He won the race, so he is in the chase as long as he maintains the top 30 in points. And he's looked like he is definitely tracking down the 48 of uh, Cody Griffin as we speak. Yeah, he's definitely one that I remember that Kansas race. <laughs> we couldn't touch him. <laughs> Everybody we were racing with, uh, we didn't really have anything for him, especially towards the end of the race. He really turned up the wick. And uh, he's one of the guys that, on the top shelf side at least, kind of kind of got off to a slow start, but really in the last couple of races, he's turned it up big time. And you're, he's showing it tonight. Even though this isn't top shelf, he's definitely showing that he's got speed to run up front. Yeah, thank you so much, sir, Tanner. Back in third position, we do have that number 81 of Shane Parrish. Again, fans. If you do not remember, you are watching the Sir Pro 200 live on All Pro Broadcasting. We give a big shout out not only to All Pro Broadcasting, Michael D'Amico, which in my opinion is the best broadcaster on iRacing, but Sir Pro also. They have the fastest response time to any kind of disaster you will ever have. You have a hot water heater go out and it floods your upstairs, you want to call 1 800 Sir Pro. You have a tornado come through or a hurricane, or just a flash flood, and you got water in your basement, you want to call 1-800-SURF-PRO. SURF-PRO has the fastest response time. They have got over 1,800 franchises nationwide. Shane Parrish owns the one in Grapevine, Texas. Obviously, if you live anywhere near there, you want to call his location. But if you call 1-800-SURF-PRO, you will get fast, immediate response. And I can guarantee you fans, you will not be disappointed at the service you will get from Sir Pro, we are very thankful they're part of uh, Domino's 2 Agile Racing. And uh, Shane is putting up a good race tonight. He's up to third position. Looks like he started pretty pretty much close to the top. <clears throat> In first, actually, he had the pole position. 
So, in my opinion, Tanner, what do you think? I think Shane is just kind of taking care of his equipment, letting the race run out, and I think it's going to be a big threat to get his first win. we got a lot of guys that are unbelievably hungry to get their first win tonight, Tanner. Oh, absolutely. You know, as we see him get a, wow, Curtis run with a big run on the bottom underneath Shane. Uh, yeah, you know, we're closing in on the three-quarter mark of this race, and I think guys are still probably saving a little bit. But uh, here in the next 10 to 15 laps, I think we're going to feel the pace really ramp up. Uh, I know as a driver myself, when we get about 20 laps to go, that's when I really start to push my hardest and burn up everything I've got left. Um, you know, I think we're going to start seeing that. Just as I say that, Curtis Young is able to get around Shane and move into the third spot. And he's actually, Curtis actually, has been running some really good lap times. Uh, not sure he's close enough to the top two to really make a charge on this run. But who knows, maybe he can short pit these guys if this thing goes green. Close that gap between him and William E. Moore and uh, maybe be able to reel in Cody Griffin and give him a run for his money by the time this thing is over. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, Tanner. And um, I'm not sure, but according to my information, Curtis Young had some issues earlier in the race. He's actually running in 16th position. He is the first car one lap down. So Curtis is trying to get his uh, lap back the old school way by passing all the leaders. And it looks like he's able to do that right now. I'm not sure what happened to him earlier on pit road or an incident on the track, but he is mowing him down every single lap. He looks like he's gaining right now on the uh, 58 of William E. Moore, but he's got to get by William E. Moore. Then he's got to get by our leader, Cody Griffin, to get back on the lead lap. Then he's got to hope the caution comes out so he can get back on the exact same playing field. But this is very exciting. He's looking at this right now of the 58 of William E. Moore. William E. Moore knows he's a lap down with fresh tires, so William's giving him plenty of room there as uh, Curtis makes his way down the back stretch. He's got plenty of room. He moves up in front of William E. Moore to get that great launch into the corner. And I tell you what, it looks like right now Curtis Young is setting his sights on the leader. I tell you what, I'm not sure I've seen anybody close this fast, but that's what new tires will do. He might have short pitted like you just said. But he is definitely one lap down, but he's about to be back on the lead lap, and I don't know if this is going to turn the hands of the leaders or not. Yeah, well, I've still got my rookie stripes up here in the booth, but Curtis is a pretty fast guy. That's why I thought he was sitting in third. But, yeah, Curtis is moving right now. He's actually going to unlap himself right there, getting around Cody. And this is what I'm talking about. I mean, if he can get out there and uh, short pit on these guys on these fresh tires and really outrun them, Maybe he'll get lucky and uh, the caution will come out and he'll actually be in better position on track than he was before his pit stop, which is really what you're looking for. Yes, sir. I tell you what, we're both rookies. We've uh, not been doing this very long. And as we speak, the 48 of Cody Griffin, the leader in his Chevrolet Camaro, is coming down pit road. He woes it down to pit road speed. Hopefully he did not get a speeding penalty in that first segment. As we all know, NASCAR and iRacing clocks you every single segment here on the uh, pit road. He's coming down pit road to his pit stall. Cody Griffin as the leader. Obviously, he's falling back down to the pit road. He's coming into pit box. I'm going to cover his pit stop right now. It looks like he's going to be the first in leaders. He comes in successfully. The right sides are growing up. Looks like he's getting two right side Goodyear Eagles. It'll be very interesting right now. Tanner to see if he gets four tires. One can sunk of fuel. Yes, left side's going up. He's getting two left side Goodyear Eagles. So he's getting four fresh Goodyear Eagles. He is off and away. Very quick pit stop. I tell you what, that could be the race winning move. Yeah, and just as we say that, look who's passing him right now on the entrance to turn one, Curtis Young. 16th, what, four or five laps ago? He's already up and cracked the top five on those fresh tires. The flip side of that, though, now is Cody's going to be about a, looks like it'll be about a half straight away behind him on brand new fresher tires. Now, Curtis's is probably, I'd have to think, about four, four or five laps older than, um, than Cody's are. So maybe those four or five laps are going to be enough for Cody to reel Curtis back in towards the end of this run. Uh, my gut's telling me it will be, but as of right now, Curtis's uh, strategy is paying off as he just picked up P2. i tell you what, does he have enough fuel? On pit road right now, we have the Ray Richard machine, the American Racing Custom Wheels 44 Chevrolet Camaro. Ray got four brand new Goodyear Eagles, two cans of Snooker Racing Fuel. <clears throat> Ray pitted from the 12th position, looks like. He is off of pit road. It will be interesting to see where Ray cycles uh, back into the track. But these guys are definitely making their last pit stops. And fans, you are in for a treat. 
you might want to see a lot of wrecking, a lot of crashed up cars here tonight, but we got some very talented drivers, even with a brand new uh, Xfinity setup, these guys have learned real quick how to manhandle this track, and they're putting in an incredible show, so your, your picks are already in for the free pizza, and hopefully you pick right, but I can tell you one thing, these drivers are definitely mixing it up, and uh, if we go green to the end of the race, it's going to be anybody's guess who can win it, and we might have another caution, which is definitely going to mix it up more. Yeah, it's interesting you bring up fuel mileage on Curtis's car. Uh, just, I ran through the lap tracker, and it looks like Curtis brought it down pit road with about 40 laps to go, and isn't it just so ironic that the fuel window here at Michigan in these Xfinity cars is just over 40 laps? So... It'll be interesting to see if Curtis can stretch this thing to the end. If he can and somehow hold off Cody Griffin out of those fresh tires, Curtis might be in the catbird seat to maybe pick up a W. Yeah, I tell you what, right now he's looking good. We've got a lot of cars a lap down in between him and second, third place. And we got a whole lot of other cars that just made their pit stop. Right now, actually, we have Gerald Campbell leading the race in that number 35 McDonald's sponsored car. It looks like uh, he's going to stretch out like he'd think he did earlier. If I'm not wrong there, uh, Tanner, I think he stayed out earlier in the race. He is in that number 35 Ford Mustang GT. I'm trying to get all the sponsors on this car, which is a beautiful paint scheme. It's obviously got McDonald's on the hood there. What other sponsors do you see uh, there, Tanner, on the 35 leading the race? Uh, it looks like that's the McDonald's Smithfield Fresh Express uh, Ford Mustang. Trying to make out what the logo is on the back. I want to say that's Gearhead Gaming and uh, the Gearhead Paint Shop. So Gerald's out front right now trying to extend that lead and stretch his fuel as far as he can. Uh, like Robert was saying, uh, we saw on the last run, Robert's, or, uh, Gerald stayed out pretty long on those old tires, and it kind of costed him. Uh, maybe he's trying his luck right now, praying for a caution and have the caution come out right now while he's leading. And... Uh, basically would re-rack the field in a sense to where I'm sure the majority of guys would come back down pit road just because tires are that important and that would put Gerald right back in the lead but right now he's just praying for a yellow. Yes sir, he just got passed by the number 98 <laughs> of Andrew Kessler. Andrew Kessler already made a pit stop. <clears throat> it looks like Andrew Kessler as we speak was the first car one lap down. He's going to get his lap back the old fashioned way. We haven't spoken much about Andrew tonight. He is always racing that, um, what paint scheme do you see on that car real quick? And I'll pull up the uh, Dominic Drama profile for Andrew Kessler. Uh, I believe that's an Aegis uh, Motorsports Racing uh, Ford Mustang. Also looks like he's co-sponsored by PowerTech Power Solutions. Um, Andrew is actually this season's winner at Texas in this series, if I'm not mistaken. So he does have a win underneath his belt so far this year. Um, he's quick. Uh, cars just haven't quite fallen his way tonight, but like uh, Robert said, he's back on the lead lap, and who knows, maybe we'll get a caution, and anything can happen in these races. Heck, you could still probably get a top five out of it if everything played out right. Yes, sir. You never know. He might even get the win. Andrew Kessler, I found it. He is driving that number 98 Ford. Andrew Kessler, he is from Belfortown, Massachusetts, way up north. His race team is Aegis Motorsports. <coughs> his sponsors are Aegis Motorsports. Chef Andy's Lobster Rolls. Man, that sounds yummers. I love that some right now. Also, PowerTech Power Solutions. He has been in sim racing for five years. He would like to give special thanks to the guys who have really helped him out, which would be Aegis Motorsports, Dave Washington. And uh, by the way, if you don't know this, fans, Andrew Kessler is a live, very popular uh, radio voice on iRacing. We are very thankful to have him as part of our Dominant 2 Racing Racing Series. He's definitely got a win already, and it's looking good tonight. Yes, sir, he is. He's actually, he's been moving uh, pretty swiftly ever since he got his lap back. I'm watching his times right now. They haven't been that far off of, uh, off of guys running inside the top five. So Andrew right now, he doesn't quite have the track position he needs, but he's got the speed that he needs, so... Like we were saying, you never know what can go, uh, what can happen in these races. Quick caution could change the whole complexion of this race. And uh, it looks like Gerald Campbell, excuse me, is on pit road right now. He came down pit road. He's getting two right side tires. I'm sorry about interrupting you there, uh, Tanner. Uh, it looks like he's getting four brand new Goodyear Eagle tires. So he was one of the last uh, to make his pit stop last time. 
He's one of the last to make it this time. He's got plenty of fuel for the end of the race. But, like you just said, this could probably cost him many, many positions by pitting late in that cycle. We all know he was definitely hoping and praying for a caution. The caution did not come out because we have some of the best talented drivers in all of our racing here at Dublin Series Racing. So that's going to move Gerald Campbell back. We'll have to see in about two laps how far back, but that's going to turn the lead over to who would you say there's Tanner for the lead? Uh, just as you say that, actually, we got a, a mean battle for the lead between William E. Moore and Cody Griffin. I believe William just took the position back to Cody, and Cody's trying to battle back on the bottom. But as we were talking about at the beginning of the race, uh, the bottom line is going to become really, really hard to pass on the later into the race we go. Uh, Cody's been working it pretty hard underneath William. He's going to look to the inside again. Can't quite get to his quarter panel. Uh, William's just able to get in that little bit cooler track surface above the preferred racing line and keep his momentum up, and he's going to be able to pull away from him just a little bit down the straightaway and uh, gap him by about a half car length headed into one. Yeah, thank you so much. This is the Battle of Dearborn. Cody gets right up to the back bumper of that Ford Mustang GT of the 58 of William A. Moore. He does not touch it, but he's all over the back. Cody is driving that Chevrolet Camaro. This is where you got the Chevrolet Camaro and the Mustang GT. They are battling all over each other. They got a lot of traffic right in front of them. Who's going to go where? Who's going to get out of the way? Who's going to get the lead? I think it's these corners it looks like in front of them. We've got uh, Mark McFadden. We also got William A. Uh, excuse me. Donald Seward. My bad. Uh, Joe Johnson, 83. They both uh, look like they're giving way as William E. Moore goes to the middle. And looks like, go ahead. I don't know how you're able to talk that fast and watch this because it's taking my breath away watching these guys. I thought for sure we were going to have uh, two of the fastest cars on track go home on the record right there, but these are the best drivers in the sim. So they held on to it, but man, I was holding my breath down the front stretch. Um, wow, I just, I can't believe they held on to that. That was, I, I don't know if they made contact right there or not. It almost looked like William may have gotten into the 67 just a little bit with the left rear. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, from the view I was watching, maybe there was a little bit of contact. But, uh, these guys are really, really going at it hard. Yeah, I tell you what, the 48 of Cody Griffin he is one of our newer drivers, William E. Moore. I've known him from way back in the Laura Lawson, um, charity race we had back in 2016 I am sure from what I have understand Laura Lawson is doing great we're happy that she's doing great and I tell you what uh, <laughs> William E. Moore is one of the guys we just heard from uh, Cody Griffin these guys are racing hard every single lap this is what you've come to see this is exactly why you're in the broadcast booth with me tonight and I tell you what all these drivers are going to be watching this replay one, two, maybe three times. And fans, whether you win the free pizza or not, you're getting a great show. And we got Chris Schoen back there. He's like, you guys go ahead and mix it up a little bit more so I can get up there and uh, win the race. We also got William Davis back here in the fourth position. He's quite a ways back in his survey Camaro, but he's going to make a run here as we got like 12 laps to go here, as far as I can tell, Tanner. We've also got Kyle Cammer in the fifth position, the number 51 Mustang GT. He's helping these guys mix it up and uh, have another caution so he can get back up to win the race. We got in sixth position Shane Pearson at number 81. He is always looking for the win. He's facially sponsored the race tonight. He's uh, starting the pole back in sixth. I tell you what, Shane will figure it out sooner or later. Could be tonight, could be next week. We've got Nick Reynolds in the seventh position at number 10. Uh, Rockstar Chevrolet Camaro Southeast Motorsports. We love to have Southeast Motorsports uh, participating in our series here. He's having a great one in seventh. He can pull out a win here. We got in eighth position. Gary Sexton and that number 17 Chevrolet Camaro. He is uh, trying to get his first one as well, so he's open for these guys to mix it up in the front. Ninth, we got Josh Bonwell. We talked about him earlier in that Mustang GT. He will get a win. Trust me. Sooner or later, he'll get the win. And in tenth, we got Ellery Queen. He is one of our veteran drivers from 2016. He can only race every other Thursday night, twice a month. He's got big time family uh, contributions or obligations. We're lucky to see him here in the race of uh, Ellery, as I know him, Jay Queen, in that number 62. What's happening up front? Oh, it looks like Cody Griffin has actually found a way back around William E. Moore. Uh, you know, it's almost kind of like these guys are playing cat and mouse up here. Tires are falling off so much. Uh, they're kind of flip-flopping the lead back and forth, kind of letting one get out front and maybe burn his stuff up, and then uh, the guy that's riding behind him saving a little bit. But they flip-flopped the lead a few times in the last 10 laps or so, 
and we're coming down to the wire right now. We're closing in on 10 laps to go. Actually, we're going to get 10 laps to go this time by. Um, if they flip-flop the lead three times in the last 10 laps, oh, I'm sure we're not. We haven't seen the last lead change yet, I'm sure. i tell you what, this is exactly why we're watching. And as far as we know there, Tanner, uh, you've got the uh, calculator, and the, you're the young, smart, high-tech broadcaster tonight. All these drivers have plenty of fuel to make to the end. Is that correct? Yes, I'm pretty sure everybody's got enough fuel to make to the end. It seems like that last round of stops came with about 70 laps to go. Uh, or, I'm sorry, on lap 70, 30 laps to go. And uh, these guys should be able to make it about 40 laps, maybe a little bit longer on fuel. So for the most part, yeah, I'm pretty sure everybody should be inside their fuel window. But it looks like uh, William Mortis, I think he got a little bit tight coming off the floor right there and lost about a car length to Cody Griffin coming off the floor. He's dropped back a little bit now. It'll be interesting to see if he can close that back up. And just as I say that, he's going to do it off too. I tell you what, these tires wear out. These drivers take different lines. And before you know it, you're right back in the game, which is what William E. Moore and that number 58 is doing. William E. Moore, he's in that fly fight win Mustang GT. I'm going to try to get a closer view of his sponsor. It's a beautiful paint job on that number 58 Mustang GT. He is driving the Air Force Mustang GT. And I tell you what, he, he is doing everything he can. He is a past service member of the Air Force. I tell you what, I'm sure he flew those jets a lot faster than this uh, Xfinity car, which is running right now. It looks like 175, 178, 181. He's getting up to 185, 190. Looks like about 192, 195 down the straightaway. 196 and 197. Oh, man, I saw him hit 198. But I'm thinking these Jets are a whole lot faster. He's doing everything he can to get around the number 48 of Cody Griffin. I just heard over the broadcast, Cody appreciates his service in the Air Force, but he's not going to let him win the race. This is going to come down to a dog fight. And you can, uh, I think I remember dog fights from uh, the Air Force, from uh, Top Gun, the movie, way back in the day. This is your old school, new school. Domino CYJ Racing, all pro Brian Kessie, dog fight to the end. Well, I can tell you what. These guys have been racing so hard since you inserted your little uh, Top Gun plug there. I'm going to say, hopefully we don't see it, but the way these guys are racing, we're on the highway to the danger zone. So, <laughs> um, it looks like Williams really got a lot of speed, and, uh, you know, I'm really liking the way he's getting off it, too. He's able to cut that thing from about two grooves on entry uh, down to the one on exit, and that's really the preferred groove here at Michigan. You can really carry a lot of speed down the backstretch doing that. Um, he's got about two car lengths between him and Cody right now. And uh, it'll be interesting to see if he can get back up to him now that we're closing in on five to go. Will he use the bumper? We don't know. We're going, we're going pretty quick to be using the bumper, in my opinion. But, uh, you know, I would not be surprised the way these guys are racing as hard as they are if uh, a little friendly contact was made before the end of this one for the win. Yeah, I tell you what. This is what you're, what you're doing. We're seeing some drivers who are racing as hard as they can. And I'm going to give another real quick driver profile. we got about five laps to go. Sean Kalist. He is a guy I love to talk about every single race. Tonight, he's bringing in that Wells Fargo Ford Mustang GT. Fans, you're going to love this paint scheme. This is one of the best paint schemes you're going to see. He's also got the uh, Victory Junction Gang on the back deck lid. This is a Tallarico paint job. Is that right, Tanner? Tell us about the paint job. Go ahead. You give us all the info on this paint job because that's what Sean is a great driver. We love having him here, and we love your paint jobs. Yeah, that's actually one. Uh, me and Sean got in contact about two weeks ago, and he requested uh, paint schemes for all of his uh, cars that he runs in TYJ. I actually painted him a truck, the Xfinity car, and a cup car. So uh, any of you guys out there that want iRacing paint schemes, uh, feel free to message me on Trading Paints, or if you're an iRacing member, uh, feel free to message me right through iRacing via private message. Yes, sir. Quick driver profile on Sean Kalis before then this race. Sean Kalis, great man, great young man, great father, great family man, great Dominus UIJ race racing 
endorser. He is from Brighton, Illinois. His team is SBT. He's been in uh, sim racing for looks like 10 years. He actually won a 70 lap Indy race at Daytona on our racing. So this guy knows how to get it done. And he is learning every single week here at the uh, stock cars. And we're very thankful to have him here. We're very thankful for Tanner to give him some great paint jobs. Exactly like Tanner said. Anybody listening to us right now, if you want a brand new, good looking paint job like this one, you cannot beat this. Wells Fargo on the hood. You know, I tell you what, this paint job is one of the best I've seen. And I tell you what, if you don't believe me, go back and see all the previous races. Watch uh, next week. I can almost guarantee you Sean's going to have one of the best looking paint jobs in the field like he does every single week. And I think Tanner Tellerico has got something to do with it. <laughs> Absolutely, yep. It looks like this time by, I believe Cody's going to see popsicle sticks in the air. Um, two laps to go. And, uh, you know, Williams dropped back about, I believe it's, looks like it's about five car lengths now. Uh, Cody doesn't seem like he's really picked up the pace that much. And maybe Williams just falling off the pace just a little bit. Who knows, he might be back there trying to cool his tires off for one last run at it, but if he's trying to do that, he's going to have to start getting after it here real quick. Yes, sir, I appreciate that, Tanner. And that might be his plan. And I tell you what, the uh, third-place driver is way back. Will Davis is like six, eight, ten seconds back. So this is definitely going to come down to the win. And Cody Griffin is already getting excited, going down the back stretch. He's looking for his first win here. I tell you what, Tanner, I'm going to let you call it to the checker flag. All right, well, here they come for the final time off, or I'm sorry, for the second to last time off turn number four. They're going to see the white flag in the air this time. Uh, looks like Cody's just out there running his own race. Williams right there. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if he really drives it into turn one deep to try to close the gap on Cody. And it looks like he's, he is driving it in deeper. Uh, the question is, can he hold that gap all the way off the corner and gain on him a little bit more? Uh, there's about a half lap to go right now. Oh, William actually gets into the wall exiting the corner. That's that's going to about give the race to Cody, but it wasn't without trying for William E. Moore. He was really pushing it coming off at two. Uh, but for the final time, coming through three and four, looks like Cody Griffin, that number 48 machine, is going to come off turn number four and see the checkered flag in the air, and he's going to claim the victory here at Michigan here today. Cody Griffin's going to take the win. I believe William E. Moore is going to come home second. Third place is going to be William Davis. Oh, it's not. Shane actually got him at the line. Shane Parrish is going to come home third. William Davis is going to fall back to fourth. And Kyle Cameron, the number 51 Interstate Batteries Mustang, is going to round out the top five. Behind Kyle, it'll be the 10 car, the points leader. What a drive. Nick Reynolds started 32nd on the night, closed up almost into the top five. Uh, he finishes sixth. Behind him, we saw the 35, Jared Campbell. He led a couple laps tonight. He's going to come home seventh. Behind him is going to be Gary Sexton in the number 17 machine. He's going to come home eighth. Josh Bonwell. I know his mom's out there watching. Uh, he's going to come home with the top ten. And behind him, we're going to have Andrew Kessler. He's going to round it out. Yeah, thank you, Tanner. Looks like we got all kind of drivers pretty happy with their finish here. I think you got through the top 15 there. Is that correct, Tanner? Uh, top 10, top 10. Yes, sir. If you go ahead and go through the whole rest of the field, you want every driver to get a little bit of recognition, even if they finish dead last. We have some guys with some really bad luck earlier. That'll give me a chance to get these uh, drivers ready for the interviews. Thank you uh, so much, Tanner. Absolutely. We had Jack Watts in the number 66 machine come home 11th. Ray Richer. Uh, he started 19th, finished 12th. That's a good comeback for Ray. Uh, behind him in 13th, we got Ellery Queen. 14th was Gary Weston. 15th, Curtis Young in the 94. Uh, he had a lot of speed. I'm not, I'll have to see what happened to him late in the race. Uh, he was running pretty good. Something must have happened. Uh, Donald Stewart in the number 78 is going to come home 16th. Jeffrey Ford in the 246, 17th. Mark McFadden, 18th. Jeff T. Martin, 19th. Joe Johnson, our in-race supporter, is going to come home 20th. Uh, Gio Bramante got one of his laps back. He picked up a couple spots late. He's going to finish 21st. Behind him, it's going to be Sean Kalist. Uh, he's going to come home 22nd. Uh, the 420 behind him, that's Russ Coe, 23rd. Eric Stanford, car number 24, is going to come home 24th. Jeremy Crandall in the number 73 will be 25th. Ivan Garcia will be 26th. Judd Danielson will come home 27th. James Somerky, 
We'll come home 28. Michael Fravert held on to that car off turn number two somehow. Still not sure how he did. It's going to come home 29th. Chad Payne in the number nine will come home 30th. Tyler Chalk will come home 31st in the number 07. Mark Jackson, we saw he had a really rough start to the race. Uh, would have been interesting to see what he could have done had the race stayed green and he stayed out of trouble. Um, comes home 32nd, and behind him in the number 42, that's David Wright, rounding out the field in 33rd. Thank you so much, Tanner. Now we're going to bring into the uh, interview room. We've got our third place finisher real quick of Shane Parrish. I'm going to go over that interview real quick, if you don't mind, Tanner. Shane Parrish, this is Robert and Tanner Talrico in the broadcast booth. Congratulations on a solid, I do mean solid, third place finish. I know you wanted a whole lot more than that, but uh, you definitely drove the wheels off tonight. We were unfortunately not able to give too many uh, commercial breaks in there for Sir Pro. Uh, we want to give you two chances. First of all, tell us about Sir Pro, what they can do for all the fans and all the uh, customers and drivers out there. And secondly, tell us about your race. Well, Sir Pro, you know, we are the premier water restoration company out there. So we do fire, smoke, mold, um, the water restoration. You got a water line in your house break, uh, you know, flood comes in, hurricane, tornado. Just give 1 800 Sir Pro call and we'll get you taken care of. Um, appreciate all the fans watching. You know, the race was great. I felt I was the fastest car out there. I was watching pretty much the last two pit stops, and I was, I was really the fast car. I just messed up two pit stops. The last pit stop, my phone rang, and I looked over to uh, see if it was our answering service with a hotline call. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. It was a great race and uh, a lot of good, clean racing, and I really enjoyed it. Yeah, I tell you what, um, I am really, really, really excited about this race for a lot of different reasons. Obviously, for Surf Pro coming on board, uh, we got a brand new winner of the Victory Circle. We're going to interview in just a few minutes. We got a brand new co commentator, and Tanner Tyreke did an unbelievably excellent job tonight. I tell you what, every single week, um, this whole series, I Racing, Dominus TYJ Racing, uh, I get more excited and more thankful that we've got the quality men and women not only participating, but fans watching. We're going to give the update in just a few minutes about who won the free pizza. But uh, thank you there, uh, Shane. Who else would you like to give thanks to? I want to give thanks to Sir Pro for you know giving me my uh, time out. My wife, that my lovely wife, that lets me do this and have a good time. And the fans out there, y'all, great. Keep watching. Uh, I'm going to put this thing in victory lane before the season's out. I just have a feeling. Oh, uh, we all have a feeling. We got about a half a dozen, maybe nine of you guys who are in the top ten every single week. I can name them right now. I'll do it later when you get in victory circle. But a lot of you guys show up at practice. You are committed. And uh, it will not be long before you're in Victory Circle. And that's what makes this so fun. It makes it so exciting. Thank you so much, Shane. Uh, have a great weekend. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you, guys, too. All right, Tanner. I'm going to let you interview our second-place finisher of William E. Moore. Hey, William, this is Tanner up in the booth, man. What a finish you had going on. I'm just uh, I'm looking at your car right now, and I know coming to get the white flag, that right side was a little bit cleaner, so it wasn't without trying to get the lead. Uh, I know you got there a few different times. What what went through your mind those last couple laps trying to trying to reel in Cody? Yeah, the uh, we were fast all night. We just uh, once you got around us there, the last 15 laps or so. I knew he was going to put a little bit of distance to me, but I, I knew I was running low on fuel as well. So trying to save fuel and tires, um, just uh, last ditch effort. I knew Shane was uh, pretty far behind us. We had lap traffic in between us. So I figured there was nothing to lose. Yeah, speaking of lap traffic, I mean, I, there was a couple times there. One that really pops into my mind. I think there was about 20 or 25 laps to go coming off of four. Uh, you and Cody split a couple lap cars, and I'm. I want to be honest with you. I held my breath. I didn't think you guys were going to make it through, but you guys held on to it. Uh, put on a great, a phenomenal show for the fans. Um, definitely one that I'm glad I could call in my first ever race in the booth. And uh, you guys did a heck of a job all night long. Who do you got on that thing you want to you want to thank tonight? We got uh, Air Force on the front here. Um, just always support them. Uh, did eight years with those guys, so. Always props to them. Got Wounded Warrior on the back. Um, and that's about it. You know, just uh, showing the good faith. Yes, well, we all here at the booth, everybody at TYJ, everybody in the field, we all thank you for your service. And uh, thank you for putting on an awesome show tonight. We'll see you in the next one. I appreciate it. Y'all guys have a good night. 
Yes, sir. Thank you, William. We'll talk to you soon. All right, I'm down here in Victory Circle with the number 48. We've got Cody Griffin here. He is driving that, if I'm not mistaken, the Proximity Motor Cars number 48, Chevrolet Camaro. Congratulations uh, there, Cody. How did you pull this one off? Are you surprised? And uh, tell us what you're feeling right now. This has got to be exciting for you. Got a copy there, Cody. Cody Griffin. I tell you what, we're having a couple of technical problems here pulling up the winner. I tell you what, he's probably so excited taking off his helmet. He broke his microphone as far as that goes uh, to get in here for the uh, interview. Uh, that sometimes does happen while he's trying to get that fixed. We're going to try to bring up our fourth place or fifth place finisher here. We got quite a few guys who had a really good run tonight outside of the top three. One of those drivers would happen to be William Davis. He's actually had a couple of good, run, uh, good runs tonight. We're going to try to pull him up. Or we're going to pull up one of our favorite fan favorites. Ray Richard. This is Robert and Tanner Talrico in the broadcast booth. Uh, you had a good run tonight. We're having some issues with the winner here tonight. How was your race tonight? How was the track? And what did you see? Oh, my goodness. What didn't I see tonight, fellas? I'll tell you what. Great action. Great racing. A lot of spread out back where I was. But uh, I qualified 25th. The car was tight all night long. There was no getting around it. You just had to really dance around the steering wheel most than anything, I'll tell you. But uh, regardless, <laughs> fabulous run. Great work by my pit guys. I ended up getting a top 15, which I didn't expect by any means. Heck, if I got top 20, I was happy this evening. But uh, the way things panned out, very happy race. There was one wreck in front of me uh early and then uh we ended up having uh well i think it was uh mark uh, the number three there got a spin and he just about got me on one of the wrecks but otherwise i made it through but uh, great night for the uh, 44 uh car tonight yeah you're talking about uh how you guys were able to go from like 15th up into the top five uh we couldn't help but notice in the booth how important fresh tires were on a green flag pit stop we saw guys short pit and we saw some guys stay out uh, from your perspective in the driver's seat, just how important were fresh tires? Extremely. Not even sure, Cody, absolutely extremely. Within a matter of about five laps, they would start to fall off. I mean, a lot of guys would immediately hit below that, that second groove. Uh, if they got down to the white line, the tires would just scuff up so hard and you bind the car up so quick. And uh, after about five, six laps, the tires basically became junk. I tried riding that second groove outside the... Uh, there's little lines on the track where they got the seams, and I tried to keep that left front tire on that seam all night long, and it seemed to hold no matter what. I mean, I had right front tire down at one point in time, uh, just about 65% when I did a pit stop, but, man, it kept cornering every turn, every turn. But then I also had to back it up a little bit. But regardless, the tire is extremely important this evening. Fuel obviously didn't seem to be a factor except for a couple guys at the end, but I almost would have had a uh, 11th place. But to somebody, I don't know who it was, ran out of fuel in front of me, and Jack Watts, I ran him down for quite a while, but... He got me by a nose on that last lap to take 11th away from me. Yes, sir. I think it was Curtis Young ran out of fuel. He was one of the first guys to go down pit road. He passed a lot of cars. And we do finally have Cody Griffin down here at Victory Circle. He finally got his uh, helmet off. He had trouble there getting the uh, thing off with the uh, microphone. He's got the champagne. I think that caused some electrical issues there. Cody Griffin, congratulations here down in Victory Circle for your first win. How are you feeling, and what does this mean to you? Ah, man, I tell you. Uh drive my butt off there. That was a lot of fun. Cars were uh, tight there on the first run and our first first few laps of the run, cars were tight and when you get uh, about 10 laps in them and they actually handled pretty good so uh, I just uh, I'm glad I ran the way I did uh, the uh, Trax Tavern Proximity Motor Cars uh, Camara. It was blazing fast from the time we got in practice. Uh, had a great uh, great run with William. Man uh, heck of a racer there. Gained a lot of respect and uh, I hope I gained some out of him too. I mean, that was just a great racer in general. Um, can't be more happier with the turnout tonight and uh, got to thank him for serving our country. Yes, sir, Cody. Give us a real quick um, summary of Proximity Motor Cars and uh, Trax Tavern. All right, uh, Proximity Motor Cars, a uh, quick rundown of it. Uh, it's my stepdad's uh, company. It's uh, 
him and his brother own it. It's a, they buy and sell used cars. They go to auctions and do that. Real good company. If you're in the Carolinas, give them a call. Uh, Proximity Motor Cars, you can find it on uh, Google. And a uh, funny story about the uh, Trax Tavern. Trax Tavern's actually uh, my girlfriend and uh, my girlfriend's boyfriend, or my girlfriend, sorry, <laughs> my girlfriend's mom's boyfriend. Uh, that's their bar. Um, it's just, it's not a public bar. It's just uh, kind of a friends and family bar and everybody knows everybody and everybody's good friends and my dad joined it and that's how I kind of met my girlfriend and it's just been good ever since. So got to gotta sponsor them, give them a little shout out too because it's a great organization. Yes, sir. I tell you what, you've been part of Domino's TYJ Racing for what, four, six weeks now? That'd be correct. Sorry, I was getting me a swallow of water. I'm yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm happy you're sweating because you definitely drove your butt off. Uh, we're happy you're part of the series here, and you definitely had your best finish tonight. Who else would you like to give thanks to, credit to, for bringing you uh, on board with Domino's TYJ Racing? I think you got a couple of very special people, and uh, we'd like to hear about them. Uh, yeah, uh, I got to thank uh, you, Robert. Uh, I, I kind of, I've been in a few leagues over the years, and you know, this one's the best one. I feel like I'm at home, and uh, I feel like I can kind of kind of can relate to all the guys you know we're all friends but when it's time to put the helmet sim helmets on and get serious you know we know how to do that so i like this league uh the rules are set up the rules are nice i like that so i gotta thank robert i uh, gotta thank uh all pro and uh michael D'Amico for uh putting this on putting the broadcast on and tanner i was listening to you there interviewing <laughs> them other guys man i'm telling you what you got something you're really good so uh, well, doing a good buddy. job in the booth, buddy. And uh, just thanks to everybody, everybody who puts this on. It was a great show, great race. I had fun driving in the car, and uh, I'll be back uh, every Thursday. I run every series, of, or I run the Xfinity and the Cup Series, so I got fortunate. But Yes, sir, Cody. Well, I forget either. Cody, Cody's in victory lane right now, but there was one point in the race where I, he looked like he was going to junk it out, but he was a wheel man, and he saved it uh, up there in turns oh, yeah. three and four. He went from being dead sideways to victory lane, so congrats, Cody. Yeah, well, uh, funny. That was kind of a racing deal. I can't even remember who that was with, but uh, I, that was my fault. It, uh, I came down on him coming into three. I was like on the third lap, second lap. I came down on him going into three and got lucky enough I didn't overcorrect it. You know, the left side tires are a lot softer on these cars, so they bite when you turn back to the right. But got lucky and straightened it up after I got out of turn four and got the win. Yep, awesome save, man. Congrats. Thank you, guys. Yes, sir, Cody. Congratulations. We'll definitely talk to you next week. We're going to be right back here at Michigan in the Top Shelf Cup Series. And fans, if you think tonight was exciting, you're going to have a whole other handful of drivers as talented, if not more talented, than the Cody Griffins. You're going to have Tanner Tellerico in the field uh, next um, Thursday night. You're going to have David Washington. He's a multiple-time winner in the Top Shelf Cup Series. So you're going to have a whole lot of competition, even more you had tonight. But uh, congratulations, Cody. Uh, we'll definitely talk to you soon. Thank you. All right, uh, Tanner, what are your last thoughts for the race tonight? Well, you know, me in the booth, uh, you know, for my first race, it was a blast. Um, i definitely like to come back and do it again, uh, you know, but the track was, uh, the track really didn't surprise me too much. It, it really ate up tires, typical Michigan behavior, and, uh, you know, I'm glad I was up here spectating this whole thing, and maybe I can put a put a couple of tips into my pocket for next week when I come here with the cup guys and we can put on a show for all you guys again yeah thank you so much for helping out we do have a free pizza winner tonight this is Tina Jordan from Nashville Tennessee uh, she must love uh, Jimmy Johnson that number 48 machine because she picked out uh, Cody Griffin early on to win this race even though he had trouble early he did win the race so she's gonna be the free recipient of the large Domino's three topping pizza carry out only fans make sure you tune in this coming Sunday night 8 50 p.m. Eastern it will be our next installment of the free pizza giveaway live on all pro broadcasting it will be our uh, renegade dirt series race we're going back to Eldora yes we are in the 360 sprint car these are fast fun unbelievably exciting races the guy the way these guys pull off the slide jobs most of them make it sometimes they don't make it you do not want to miss it plus it's your next chance to win the free pizza so 
Thank you so much, Michael D'Amico, for all for broadcasting. Thank you, Town Tanner Talrico, uh, for helping out tonight. This is Robert McFarland signing off. Thank you, fans. We'll definitely talk to you soon. Have a great weekend, and we'll talk to you on Sunday night. servepro.com helping make fire and water damage like it never even happened hey this is Garrett Smithley driving the number zero JD Motorsports Chevrolet and you're watching All Pro Broadcasting You're on the inside of them a little bit. Actually, you guys have already slowed down. I don't know if it shows it on the